post it on the site real quick. All right, we're live. What's going on, guys? Rich Schneider right here, publisher of the Night Report. Uh, you're here at the Rutgers Basketball Pre-Game Show, Indiana Edition, Part 3, Part tri Trace, whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm Rich Schneider. Right? I'm the publisher of the site. Joined by Chris Nowalski, our beat writer. Uh, Craig Epstein, one of our staff writers on the Night Report. And then we're also joined by a special guest, Alec Lassley, if I said that right. Yeah, yeah, you did. Uh, perfect. So Alec Lassley of Indiana.Rivals.com, a.k.a. The Hoosier. Um, what's going on, guys? You guys ready for this game? Yeah, I'm ready. To, I'm ready to get going and cover some Big Ten uh, hoops. Damn, yeah, there's a little less nerves going into this after that uh, Minnesota win. I'll tell you that much. So yeah, uh, I think uh, <laughs> I think all IU fans are are uh, pretty excited for the season to be over. To be honest with you guys. <laughs> yeah. So so let's jump right into it. We kind of just talked about it a little bit before starting the show. Um, Alec, what's the feeling like? I guess among the Indiana fan base going into this one. Yeah, I mean, obviously you, you kind of look at it and you don't expect a team to to kind of beat another team three times in the same season, right? I feel mm -hmm. like everyone kind of uh, looks at that as the 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 loan saving grace for for Indiana tonight. But <laughs> there's there's not a lot of hope for uh, for IU fans, and I don't think they really want a lot of hope. Uh, I think uh, a lot of people are pretty much, uh, in terms of a fan base, done with with Archie Miller and, and everything that that's kind of gone on this year has really uh, emphasized that a little bit more. Um, so mm -hmm. they're they're kind of looking for an early exit tonight. I don't think many people expect Indiana to to move on, um, and that's kind of their their feeling uh, moving forward, especially. So so let me double up on that one a little bit. Archie Miller uh, obviously came to uh, Indiana from Dayton, had a pretty successful Dayton career if I remember correctly. But uh, what's what's the problem with him? What's the issue with the program? Is it just not recruiting well enough? Because I looking at this, I see a couple four stars each year. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, exactly. It's it's really been kind of confusing because he has built it the right way, right? He, he came into Indiana and he said, you know, we're going to do this on defense and recruit the state of Indiana. And he's done that up until this past year in the, the 2021 class. He's won the state of Indiana year in and year out in terms of recruiting. Mm -hmm. And you, you saw a little bit of progress year in and year out um, for for Indiana um, since, mm -hmm. he, since he got here. But this year, it, it was a it was a main a uh, major drop off, and I think a lot of it you, you kind of point to the the injuries a little bit with with Joey Brunk uh, being out for the entire season, and, and some guys nicked up um, for for most of the season too. Um, but for for the most part, that that core group of guys has has been there now for two three seasons, and it just has not clicked. And um, there, there really is a lot of confusion about why that is, but I think a lot of people just look at it and there's not a lot of stars on this team. There's not a lot of really, really good upper uh, big 10 talent from top to bottom. I mean, if you look at the rosters uh, across the big 10, I don't necessarily think there's a huge drop off, mm -hmm. but you, you go from trace Jackson Davis. And then uh, especially if Armand Franklin isn't playing, uh, which he hasn't for, for most of the, uh, the last month and a half here, but you, you look then and you have Al Durham, Really good four-year player, but I, I don't think he's he, he's not someone who's going to consistently give you you know twelve to fifteen a night, and he hasn't really done that for most of his career, um, upwards of probably the last maybe four or five games. 
But outside of those two, you don't really have any guys who can go out and score the ball, and you, you don't have any guys who can actually create their own shots. And I think that's one thing that Archie Miller's failed to do is get actual scores, mm -hmm. and he, he's just tried to put a team around one or two good players instead of getting the best players that, that really uh, are available. All right, he answered all my questions. I'm done. It's up to Craig. <laughs> well, that wraps things up, good folks. Good night. Uh, yeah, no, but uh, obviously touching on the injuries a little bit, um, you just mentioned Franklin hasn't been with the team for a little bit. Uh, is there any update on those guys? Or It, it looks like both uh, Armand Franklin and Ray Thompson are going through the initial warm-ups here. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they're, they're still close to an hour before tip, so we'll, we'll see what happens. I would be more shocked if, if Armand Franklin ended up playing tonight. Mm -hmm. um, I, I expect Ray Thompson to play. That's just the, the type of guy that he is, even though he has been dealing with uh, the, the broken nose and then tweaking his ankle against uh, uh, Purdue. But outside of that, I mean, I, I just don't the, the way Archie Miller talked yesterday, uh, I don't expect Armand Franklin to play. It, it's actually more of a surprise that he's going through warmups right now, just because yeah. he has not been able to do a whole lot in practice over the last uh, couple of weeks. So I guess, I guess how big of a, it's kind of a weird way to say it, how big of a kick in the nads is this that they're not playing? Yeah, it's it's pretty big. I mean, you, you look at Armand Frank and he's the best uh, two-way player on, on this Indiana roster. Um, the way that he's really physical on the defensive end that I think um, could kind of impact uh, the game a little bit more than, than when, you know, he actually does stuff on the offensive end, just the way that he would be able to kind of slow down the, the Rutgers guards um, mm. with their dribble penetration. But um, I, I think at this point, Indiana's learned – I guess that's that you can put it that way, even though they've lost five in a row, they've learned how to play without them. Yeah. Um, but it's obviously they, they haven't, you know, really learned the, the right way, but uh, they know how to play without them now. And it, it's, it is what it is at this point. Um, Archie Miller said that <laughs> a couple of times, but um, it, it'll be interesting to see if he does go, if he does, it'll be interesting to see what he can actually do on the floor. All right. No, I'm seriously out of questions. You guys got to ask him one. <laughs> So I would say, so I know there's a lot of heat around Archie Miller in the Indiana right now, but you're talking about a lot of injuries. Would you put more of really, I mean, it's not a great season for Indiana, so would you put more blame on the injuries or would you put it more on Archie Miller? No, I would I would put it definitely more on Archie Miller, right? Because, mm -hmm. I mean, if you, look at, if you look at Joey Brunk, obviously the toughness that he brings to the to the group is is definitely a big loss because that, that mental and physical toughness – uh, Indiana has definitely lacked this season, but they they still have players to, to play, right? I mean, they have struggled in practice to really put a lot of bodies on the floor, but when it's all said and done, you still have uh, first team all Big Ten and Trace Jackson Davis, you, probably a guy who's going to be on one of the All-American teams uh, at the end of the season here, and you, you still have some pieces. Um, I think the freshmen haven't really developed as much as, you know, maybe fans hope for at this point, but... You know, you're seeing that with freshmen all around the country uh, th yeah, this season, just that. not being able to kind of get into the groove of things. Um, so, yeah, I, I would definitely put it more on, on Archie Miller than the injuries mm -hmm. up to this point. And would you say – I know it sounds like you're not a very big fan of Archie. Would you say uh, – <laughs> where would you say, like, the starting point was where the fan base kind of turned on Archie? Probably at some point last year. You could say um, it's the Pico wins over him. <laughs> You could just say it. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it really is. I mean, you, you should see and listen to some of the fans when they when they bring up some of the losses, they point right to Rutgers being able to uh, not being able to beat Rutgers for, for most of his his tenure. Um, a, a lot of fans look at that and they're like they, they obviously think of the Rutgers of old and, and not the, the newer Rutgers teams here in the past two seasons. Yeah. Um, but but for, for the most part, it, it's just not really being able to, to build off of a win. I mean, they they do put up solid performances against top 25 teams. They've been able to do that for most of Archie Miller's tenure. They'll get those wins, but they just can't follow those up with, you know, two or three other um, solid wins in especially games that they should win. And that puts them right back into the kind of the, the revolving door of win one, lose one, or win two, lose two. And up until um, the, the five game losing streak that they're on right now, they hadn't won more than two games a season in a row and they hadn't lost more than two games in a row. So it's just they're, they're staying in the same exact place and just running in place that I think Indiana fans are, are just kind of fed up with uh, at this point. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Uh, Chris, you got anything? Uh, no. That, you're really yeah, quiet over there. I don't like all. it. 
little too quiet. The only thing I was gonna, the only thing I was gonna ask is, doesn't Archie have a big buyout? I think it's like a ten million dollar buyout. I mean, yeah. unless a booster steps up, I mean, that's it's not it's not you know pennies here. I mean, that's gonna it's, they can't just get rid of him and not feel it. No, no, exactly, and it goes down to uh, three million uh, next season. So, ah, okay. I mean, you, you, you look at that and that's why you're kind of on the edge of, you know, get rid of them after this season, or do you wait until that buyout's a little bit, uh, obviously lower next season, but at the same time, w- what happens if, you know, he, he puts together a, a sweet 16 team next year or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, then you're at that point where he's had one good year and you either have to let him go or, or renew that contract. And that's that's a tough situation to be in when he doesn't have a, a great track record um, to kind of back him up. Mm-hmm. So, like, where do you even go after, like, Archie? Like, obviously, it doesn't look like he's probably not going to return, but no one really knows for certain. But where, where do you go after that? I know B-Line's technically just waiting in the wings. Yeah, I mean, if you, if you <laughs> ask Indiana fans, it's – Chris Beard, Scott Drew, or Brad Stevens. Those are the three that all Indiana fans want, and I, I think you can cross those three right off the list before yeah. you even finish uh, finish writing it. It's just Indiana fans uh, are still somewhat stuck back in, in the, the 80s, in the 90s. You just um, lost like they, six subscribers. They... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it, it, it's true, though. I mean, you, you look at Indiana has not been a successful program in, in the last 20 years, and it, it's tough – to, to really look at the program and have a, a great vision on, on what exactly you want. Uh, obviously, Tom Crean did a phenomenal job transforming the program and getting it back into at least the, the national limelight. Mm-hmm. Um, but he, he just wasn't that guy to, to take them to the next level. Um, and I think a lot of people thought Archie Miller was going to be that guy, obviously, with, with the hire, and he just hasn't been able to do that. So, I mean, it, it, it's interesting um, to, to see exactly where they would go. A lot of people do want – an IU guy to, to be the guy to come in uh, to kind of restore that, that history um, that, that has been lost, but there, there just aren't a lot of IU guys out there that have the, not only the, the reputation and the kind of college ranks, but also the coaching world um, and have kind of the, the resume to back them up for that. I think I would say to the Indiana fan base that I wouldn't get so wrapped up in the Indiana guy thing, because look at Steve Peichel. I mean, he is a New York, New Jersey guy, but he's not exactly a Rutgers guy. He came from Stony Brook. So I would say focus more on like find, know somebody who kind of knows the area, but they don't have to necessarily be, you know, like an Indiana guy. I mean, the, look at Michigan football. They hired Harbaugh because he's a Michigan guy. And all of a sudden, you know, he they've kind of turned on him in the last few years. Yeah. <laughs> so that would be my kind of message to uh, the Indiana fan base, if, if you allow me. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, you, you look at it in the – Obviously, not to the extent that the Indiana program has been over the last 20 years, but you look at the way Indiana basketball and Michigan football are right now, and they're they're, they're kind of right along the, the same mm-hmm. level there where they have such a rich history and tradition, but they they haven't been able to, to kind of live up to that um, in, in the last, you know, five, ten years, uh, especially obviously with, with, with Harbaugh over there, but um, yeah, right. I mean, it's, it's the, the, the next, the next hire that Indiana makes whenever that is needs to be a, an absolute home run. And I, I just don't know if you specifically have that guy right now. Um, obviously you're, you never know if it's a home run hire until five, 10 years down the line. Um, anyway, but I, I just don't know if anyone really knows who that guy's going to be. Yeah. I think I remember seeing on our board actually not too long ago, somebody mentioned Brad Stevens to IU. But I was like, really? I was like, I mean, first of all, you're going to have to pay that guy a boatload yeah. of money. And he's going to get an, And if Boston does decide to fire him, he would get another NBA job in like five minutes. So I really can't see that happening. So, yeah, and I don't I don't see him wanting to come back to to college, especially the way yeah. Yeah. Uh, recruiting has changed so much since he was at Butler. Um, he, he wasn't a guy who liked to recruit in, at the, in the first place. So especially with, with all the one and dones. Um, who knows if that's still going to stay intact, obviously, with the G League and um, the one-time transfer rule and, and everything like that going into effect. It just doesn't seem like college is really the place for, for Brad Stevens. Do you have a name in mind if if they do des- decide to move on from Archie? No, because I don't think they're going to move on from Archie at the end of the uh, season. I think he'll be, next, he'll, be, uh, he'll be here next year. Um, I agree with you, by the way. I don't think they're going to fire him. Yeah, it, it, and, and I've, I've been in the – the pro Archie fan base probably for, for longer than a lot of other people are or, or have been. Um, but 
it, definitely the the way Indiana's performed over the last month, month and a half has been, you know, a major concern because his, his the the kind of saving grace for him is obviously get his guys in year four, year five. That's that's when you start to see everything uh, um, kind of move forward. Mm-hmm. But you were expecting a lot more from year four, and now you're sitting at twelve and fourteen uh, on the on the season, and really no no positives uh, to really speak for uh, from this season. See, now yeah. that, that's where I kind of find it a little interesting. Like, did this, did this current AD at Indiana hire um, Archie? No, it was Fred so, Glass, the previous one. That's why I think it gets really interesting, because I'm assuming this current AD also hired Tom Allen. The, the, the current the, AD? Yeah, did he hire Tom Allen? The, no, the, oh, so the he previous one. Either. Wow. So yeah, that's he, kind of... he, he just, yeah, he showed up, uh, I think, a year and a half ago. Now, I feel so, like that's like one of those things where like, uh, it's kind of like an NFL, like you got you to... Gotta, GM and it's kind of like I want my own head coach, I want my own quarterback. So I, that's the only reason I could see them possibly moving on, but like not a hundred percent, I guess. It is. It is interesting because they just gave uh, earlier this week they gave uh, Tom Allen uh, a raise and kind of restructured mm-hmm. his his contract. Um, so it, it's interesting that everything's kind of shifting um, towards kind of that that football program instead of obviously what it should be at this time of the year uh, yeah. basketball related it is very <laughs> weird to see indiana as a as a football school in that right now <laughs> yeah no exactly everyone that that's that's another thing that gets uh the iu fan base kind of uh riled off and, and pissed off because <laughs> they they don't want to be a, a football school as as good as the football program is now and and as much as tom allen's taking them to the to the next step it, it's obviously iu basketball it is the the live and die for for iu fans no matter how good the football program is so that's been the, the one interesting uh fact and and just kind of interesting thing over the last year just to see kind of the transition from uh the the positive things in basketball to the the absolute positives in, in football that's so tough because everyone knows football that's that money maker they drive the bus and if you have a good and they're, they're very good like they're a very good indiana football team that's that's a yeah. tough one but <laughs> Yep. Hey, listen, no, if Indiana it, wants exactly. to throw, if Indiana wants to throw some of those recruits, Rutgers, right? I mean, oh. I'm sure Shiano will be open. Yeah, Shiano's got like yeah, top, he's top he's uh, class, he's man. he's he's dipping down into Florida. I saw more yeah. more recently Tom Allen State. So uh, yeah. that'll be interesting to see what happens. It was Shiano State originally. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> anyway, let, let's touch back on these these two former Rutgers Indiana games. Uh, we'll go with Chris. Chris. These past two games, Geo Baker and Ron Harper combined for 34 points the first game and then 40 points the second game. Yeah. Are we seeing that again tonight? I th- I think so. Um I think I think this is Geo Baker's time, you know, his time to shine right now. That he shows up in big moments. Mm-hmm. Um I think he's going to have a good tournament. Um how long that tournament is, I I don't know yet, but um Sweet 16. He definitely going to have to show up tonight. I know Indiana uh everyone's talking about them checking out, but I'm sure that you know all the, all the players aren't checked out. Of course, they want to win, and they want to keep moving on, win the tournament, maybe make the NCAA tournament. But right now, uh, this team is honestly going to go as, as far as Ron Harper Jr. and, and Geo Baker take them. And that's um, I mean, and that's how a lot of people feel. They can shoot the ball. Uh, they can play defense. Geo Baker, you know, he shows up big moments. Um, I know the last two games have been kind of kind of one-sided. Um, I know Indiana got a – Got a big lead last time, but Rutgers made a comeback on senior night. That was that was a really good win for them. Uh, the first game was big win on big win on the road. Rutgers were still rolling at that point uh, during the winning streak. Um, so I mean, this game will be interesting to see. You know, obviously everyone says it's hard to you know beat a team three times in one year, so it, it'll be very it, it's very interesting. See, now I'm glad you just said that because someone just asked uh, Mike Friedman in the chat just said, when's the last time Rutgers mm-hmm. beat the same team three times in the season? I'm not gonna lie, I I've been think... sitting here and clicking for the past like five minutes. It was I found I actually. It. It's funny that you say that. I was just reading it. It was t- it was the 2013-14 season, but I don't yeah, know right. what team it was. Uh, it was South then. South Florida. Oh, right. South Florida. Well, yeah, the one before that, that I found <laughs> then. 1980-89, they beat St. Bonaventure three times. If that counts, okay. but yeah, so. yeah, whatever. There's so many times where they played like a team three times and it's just one loss. So mm-hmm. that's why it's, it's, it stays true to that motto that you cannot really beat a team three times in one season. It's uh, it's definitely going to be tough. It's I interesting. Mean, you know, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens tonight. But uh, yeah, Alec, if you have any questions for us at all, don't hesitate to ask. Yeah. I mean, I guess my, my biggest thing, obviously the, 
the the main player for Indiana, obviously Trace Jackson Davis. But from a from a Rutgers standpoint, I mean, when you look at this Indiana offense outside of him, is there anyone who you really look at and you're like, All right, we can't really let him go off, or it's going to be a long night for for Rutgers? I mean, how how do you guys really look at this Indiana roster from from top down? Right, well, I actually know. Obviously, Trace Jackson Davis is is Indiana's best player. Uh, I know you mentioned before Al Al, Al-, Al- Durham. Um, he he caught fire the other uh, last time Rutgers played them. Um, so he could obviously shoot the ball. So I mean, I know everyone says you know Rutgers will will be able to bully them, but I mean I know he he's a good player. He can shoot the ball. I think I think he's the one who had the bank the bank three pointer last time they played, right? Yeah. So. Yep. Yeah, it was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, Rutgers. I mean that put them up like 20, 29 to eight maybe at, at that point. So. I mean, if he catches fire, I mean, who, who knows what could happen? I mean, it's definitely going to be interesting, actually, too, playing playing inside a football stadium. I know Coach Pucko the other day talked about, you know, the depth perception and stuff. So, I mean, I'm not sure how the teams are going to are going to really shoot the ball. And there's fans for a change. It's mm-hmm. about time, but we got fans in the crowd. The only thing is, Indiana probably has a home court advantage. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, <laughs> do you, do, like, have you talked to anyone or heard anything out like at all, like about a ton of Indiana fans going to the game, or as many as? I guess you can go. Yeah, I I, I know some are. I, I wouldn't put it into much of a you know so called home court advantage just because, like I said, a lot of IU fans don't really support the team. I guess <laughs> at, uh, nice. at this moment, um, so it, it's kind of tough to to see a lot of Indiana fans going. I know a lot mm. a lot aren't, um, but I, I also know some that that are. But it, I don't think it's going to be anywhere near what you normally would expect it obviously in a, in a COVID year, but yeah. um, it, it's probably not going to be too, too much one-sided in, in that one. Would you say that's just more of like a, a protest of uh, Archie Miller kind of? <laughs> yeah, you could, you could put it, you could put it like that. <laughs> oh, yikes. That's just, it sounds, it sounds like it's crazy that they are going to keep him. I mean, I guess if enough boosters get in the year of the AD, it's, he's as good. Yeah. As John, that's but... the only way I kind of feel like that can move is $10 million. That's a lot. So it's like, yeah, yeah but... must boosters come together. I I think they're just gonna kind of grit their teeth for another year. And if he if it's his, if next year is like this year, then they'll get rid of him because it's mm. a, like you said, it's a, only a three million dollar buyout. So yeah. I think the, I, that's why that's how I see it going is that they're just gonna give him another year and see how it goes. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking at your board yeah, now. Matt's... I see a lot of Brad Stevens talk. This is is a little crazy. <laughs> yeah, no, and I, I think it's <laughs> it's tough to. You know, you're seeing this with with Patino at uh, Minnesota too, but um, it it's tough. Oh, he's out. To, I think he's out. Yeah, but it, it's tough to look at this season, um, just with with COVID and everything going yeah. on in the off season, um, and I guess the the lack of off season, um, mm, and then yeah. and then obviously pauses, restarts. Obviously, that didn't really affect Indiana too much. They didn't mm. uh, actually get. Uh, get to go on COVID pause like a lot of other programs around the country. But, mm-hmm. um, you know, that that plays a lot into why I think you do give him another year um, just because even if you take the buyout out of the, out of the, out of the window, out of the question here, I mm-hmm. still think he would get another year just to, to see if he would be able to do anything else. Um, but at that point, it's you, you know what you have with him. And the, you you know that that's not pretty much going to change after that. Yeah, I mean it, it makes sense. So you, like you said, the whole COVID thing, um, we saw it kind of on Rutgers end a little bit. They brought in four freshmen this year, and three of them are not. Or I guess technically five. Uh, three or four of them are not playing like any minutes whatsoever. I'm contributing that to mostly a, uh, <clears throat> a there's no off season at all. The fact that you're not allowed to, you couldn't really practice. There was just a whole gap where they were just sitting at home instead of being in the gym or whatever. But it, it is crazy. This um, So I guess a lot of guys are going to get passes, but like I kind of mentioned before, I, I don't see Patino surviving. I think he's been here long enough. He had his chance. What's Archie in? Archie, year four, five? Yeah, four. So you probably give him a fifth year. Kind of, again, it's right, on, it's, right on that, it's right on that border. Yeah, and he recruits so well. So it's like you kind of got to give him like maybe one more year just to see if what happens, I guess. I don't know what the recruiting class looks like currently. Um I don't know if you want to touch on that. I don't they, know when is it good. Yeah, they they just have they just have one uh, Logan Duncan four star center for uh, twenty twenty one from Ohio. Okay, uh, and then they have uh, Parker Stewart who transferred in mm. uh, mid year from uh, Tennessee Martin. So okay. that that's basically their their twenty one 
class uh, so, for right now. So it's kind of a little bit of a replacement for Trace Jackson, I guess, a little bit, sort of. Yeah. I mean, he's not. Yeah, no one's going to replace him, but. Yeah, I think I think everyone's looking at uh, Joey Brunk, uh, who hasn't played all year, looking at, to, mm-hmm. to him to come back for use that COVID year okay. um, and, and come back. And I think at this point, I, I would uh, – I would side with he's probably going to to return to Indiana next year. Mm-hmm. Um, so that, that'll that be a huge boost no matter what happens with, with Trace Jackson Davis. But um, I think that's that, that class. And there, there's still so many questions, uh, obviously, related to the one-time transfer. I mean, you, you, there's hundreds of players in the mm-hmm. transfer portal already, and we that's haven't even insane. reached the, the quarterfinals of half of these conference tournaments. Yeah. It's, it's, it's crazy. I saw mm-hmm. someone posting on our uh... – basketball board they're like yeah there's projected like over 500 kids being in the portal by the end of the season i'm like nine put that number up a little bit a little bit it's gonna <laughs> be nuts this this is gonna be 10 times worse than the football portal is and that that's already kind of pretty bad so it's, <laughs> a, it's yeah, definitely it's definitely interesting it's a it's a shit show for sure but whatever um anyway we got a guy in the chat mike friedman asked if nit bid for the hoosiers is that possible you think well, I don't know how they're going to do it this year. Um, they only have 16 teams going down mm. to the bubble in uh, Dallas. But, you know, usually for the NIT, you have to have at least a 500 record. Um, obviously, okay. if Indiana loses tonight, it's going to be 13 and, or 12 and 15. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I don't know if it's they're, they're going to change up the rules at all. Um, mm-hmm. I, obviously, you still look at uh, the, the NIT still having a bit of that those those replacement teams, I guess you can call them, if uh, in the first round of the NCAA tournament, yeah. one of those one of those teams get get COVID and have to leave. Mm-hmm. So I don't think you're gonna put in a team that's sub 500. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens with that. All right. So at this yeah. point, do you think that Indiana would even want an NIT? To be honest, like it kind of is. It, what would you just say? I I would side with probably not. Yeah. Just with everything, especially yeah. uh, especially the the way that you put them in a bubble again, um, mm-hmm. right. and they're they're finishing up their their school year. The last thing they probably want to be doing is down in Texas playing for an NIT title um, and potentially losing the first or second round. Right? Yeah. I mean, that's you, you look at that, and that's probably the last thing on on these players' minds after uh, five months of of doing this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So, so let's talk a little bit more Rutgers. And Alec, feel free to jump in or ask his questions whenever. But uh, Jacob Young's coming off a 23-point game, big win against Minnesota. This team's kind of riding high after getting that away win. Uh, Chris or Craig, whoever wants to jump in here, just what are your thoughts on this game? I know we kind of just touched on it a little bit with Chris. If you want to jump in, Craig. I would say, like, I would I would say going into this, I would expect Rutgers to win. It is tough to beat a team three times in a season, but it's mm-hmm. also, you know, like I said, it's also tough in my in the article. It's also tough to beat a time a team, you know, five of your last six meetings, which Rutgers also happen to do. So I think going into this, I would expect Rutgers, win, but don't I don't I don't want to sleep on Indiana here because Indiana, I mean, they're not exactly great, but they're not they're not walkovers anyway. I mean, Rutgers was without that without that run last game. Indiana was running them out of the building. It seemed like Rutgers kind of figured things out, and Archie didn't exactly know how to combat you know Steve Peichel's adjustments, but. It, don't sleep on Indiana. I mean, they're they're not exactly a one seed, but they're not the worst team in the league here. I mean, they're 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 a team that if you let them get hot, they can they can run over you. Yeah, I mean, uh, they have a future first round pick in Trace Jackson Davis, future Brooklyn Net, hopefully. But <laughs> besides the point, not important. Um, anyway, uh, Chris, what do you, what do you think? I know you kind of touched on it before, but uh, I know you kind of want to brag about your little bracket too. Yeah, same thing. Uh, actually, you know what? <laughs> About that bracket, so only I only have. I'm pretty sure I only had the the first game right so far from from last night. So oh, okay, so we you could just skip that. That's all right, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll ignore that one. I think we all picked Minnesota, Michigan State. But though. yeah, I mean, I actually I I agree with Craig. You know, Indiana is still a still a good team. Sure, they don't have the best record, but it's still Indiana. They they still have good players. Um, anybody could be anybody in the Big Ten. Um, I think Rutgers. Uh, last time out, maybe they were on kind of like an emotional high from senior night and everything that that surrounded that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think maybe right now they they'll you know be more looser, possibly. Um, they know that their job is done. Um, you know that they are you know they're gonna get the bid to the NCAA tournament. I think I think that's like kind of a weight weight lift off their shoulders. Um, but yeah, I mean this game is gonna be it's gonna be tough. Every game in the Big Ten is tough. Like I said. Uh, Miles Johnson's gonna have to shut down Chase, uh, maybe maybe Harper, 
Um, and so, I mean, it'll be, it'll be, it'll be a good game. Yeah, I, I'm intrigued. Um, I just hope they don't look ahead because. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, I actually, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I know you. I actually asked Pucko that the other day about, you know, keep, keeping the guys focused, and, uh, you know, I asked him specifically about, you know, keeping them focused in tournament with Selection Sunday coming up. Obviously, Rutgers hasn't really had that, had to worry about that for, mm-hmm. you know, 30 years basically. So <laughs> that's insane. Um, I mean, he says he says the guys are focused. Um, they're taking it one day at a time, 40 minutes get you 40. He said the other day. Um, so I don't slogan. think they're they're looking ahead, but it's definitely something possibly you know on the back of the players' minds. But I don't I don't think it's something to worry about. Yeah, that's something I'll be interested to watch with Rutgers tonight. Is for the first time in really a long time, I feel like they can just play loose because the last mm-hmm. really couple games, especially the Minnesota game, with uh, I mean they felt like they were playing very tight and very mm-hmm. nervous because they knew they had this bid on the line. Now that they know March Madness is they're going to be in March Madness, I'll be interested to see how this team plays. Just I'll be interested to see it, like knowing that they're in and see yeah. how if they play more loose or not. Yeah, I mean when I've covered games with Richie, um, you know this team, this team is at its best when they have fun in the court, when they're mm-hmm. you know throwing alley oops, when they're just making crazy hustle plays like that. That that's when they're at their best, and maybe maybe we get to see that again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, guys, if you're watching right now, you're joining uh, the TKR Rutgers basketball pregame show. We got Alec Lassley from the Indiana Rivals site. We got our beat writers from the uh, the Night Report, RuckersRivals.com, the best Rutgers site on the web, hands down. RuckersRivals.com. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Perfect. Um, <laughs> keep throwing that in there. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> Mike said that uh, Mike Friedman just said the ESPN matchup predictor, which is, has been absolute shit this entire year, has Indiana <laughs> have 51.8% chance to win. I mean, don't get me wrong. I do think it's going to be close, but like we kind of just talked about, this this Rutgers team came out firing. Was it last time or the first game? I think it was last time. Yeah, uh, no, the, f- the what against Indi- against Indiana. Yeah, wasn't it? Was it getting? No, last well, the last time Rutgers played Indiana, they were getting. Indiana came Indiana. out to the big run. That's what. It was. Yeah, Indiana. Yeah, yeah. And then it came back. So no, I'm still I'm still pretty confident in this Rutgers team. Like you guys said, that weight is kind of lifted off their shoulders, and the fact that. Uh, the fact that they're in pretty much like it's almost like everyone's saying it they're a lock so it's just nothing to worry about the only issue is that we we just touched on too uh looking ahead because like if you look ahead if you're Rutgers, it's like hey we beat indiana twice we could beat them a third time hey we beat yeah. illinois once hey we could beat them again hey if we beat them then we play iowa for the third time and then so <laughs> on and so on it's like not looking ahead but it's it's kind of an ideal setup for Rutgers if they are going to make a run yeah, that Maryland, uh, Penn State beating Maryland really, really helped them. I, th- I, I think. I mean, we'll see what happens tonight. But I think, other than Michigan the fact State? that we did, yeah, what I say? Uh, Penn State. Yeah, Penn State beating Maryland. Oh, other, you mean I'm saying in, the other you, night? You mean the other night? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Today. I think that kind of gave them. That's more of the. That's probably the better route. But mm. other, I mean, we'll see tonight. But I think that Penn State win over Maryland kind of helps Rutgers. But I guess we'll see. Yeah. Oh, one thing I want to mention is Stacey asked about the officials. Um, no Bull Borowski. Oh, yeah. big news. Uh, Alec, I don't know if you know about Bo. You probably know about Bo at this point. Yeah, no, no one likes Bo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everybody knows Bo for the wrong reasons. I saw yeah. um, Izzo was freaking out about him today. Yeah. Like, dude, this guy sucks. How does he have a job? <laughs> like, I really don't get it. Like, he just he messes up so many times, and it's just like, oh, yeah, we'll give him a pass. Let him go been doing it for i don't know 15 years but i think it was the maryland uh penn state game where it was every literally every five minutes bo was going to the monitor or no 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 it was the uh it was the which game was it uh i think the last iowa game yeah it was wisconsin yeah yeah yeah, Yeah. that was it where every five minutes they were going to the monitor and it's like literally the last like minute took like 40 minutes it was like every every time it was like enough all right, I'm just going to say this is the not the Rutgers basketball pregame show. This is the We Hate Bo Borowski <laughs> podcast. How's it going? I'm your host. Uh, <laughs> no, he, he sucks, man. I don't understand how like he gets away with this shit. Um, it's nonstop. He's, he's very anti-big man, apparently, um, especially when it comes to Rutgers. Miles Johnson just gets – I don't know what happens. I don't know if Miles like did something to this guy, but he hates Miles Johnson. It's insane. But uh, yeah, that, that's yeah. That's, I, I take it back to the first Ohio State game. That was bad. There was like three yeah. fouls in the first like two minutes, mm-hmm. <laughs> and they're like ticky tacky fouls. Like let them play. Like yeah. that's one of my biggest like pet peeves. End of the game, like when they call the stupidest fouls, just let them play. Like 
I don't know. Yep. Don't get me started. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, yeah, if you guys have any questions whatsoever, just submit them in the chat to my left, right? I don't even know where it's at. Somewhere. But, um, yeah, uh, th- I, I do think Rutgers has a good chance in this game. Uh, Alec, if you again, you have any questions for us at all, feel free to shoot them our way. Yeah, I mean, if you guys looking at Indiana from a, an offensive standpoint, mm-hmm. all right, I mean, again, they're, they're a lot more inside than, than, than outside oriented, but, mm-hmm. um, for, from a, from a Rutgers defensive standpoint, where, where do you see the, the one, uh, potential mishap that, that Rutgers is having on the defensive end that, that could lead to this game being a lot closer maybe than, than what people are, are actually thinking. Uh, do you guys want me to drop in or you want to do it? Yeah, you can. Yeah. So, I mean, there, there's times where Rutgers just gives up like stupid buckets in the paint. Like there's the, I think it was either Minnesota or the game before that. I forget who it was exactly, but there's just times where they literally like just wet the lane, like wide open. And it's like, what are you doing? You cannot let the lane wide open on Trace Jackson Davis. This man is going to dunk on somebody and it's going to be ugly. It's going to be disgusting. I don't like how Harper matches up against Jackson Davis. Or Jackson Davis played a five for you guys, right? Yeah, he's usually matched up against Miles Johnson, and okay, that's what's. So, yeah, it's it's kind of a Miles is such a good defender, so it's tough. But mm-hmm. like Trace Jackson Davis is still going to get his eighteen points probably, regardless of how good Miles is. He'll affect shots here and there, but I don't know. That's that's a tough one. And then like if you saw last game, uh, was it Franklin or Durham? One of them dropped twenty points. I don't know. Yeah, which it was. Uh, yeah, I talked about. Yeah, that. yeah, they they give up the three pointers quite a bit. It's, I don't know. There's some. It's just like a lackluster effort at times, and it's just. Mm. And once they get like down in the dumps on themselves, the yeah. whole mm-hmm. defense just falls mm-hmm. apart, and it's like, what the hell is going? This is not Steve Michael's team. Like this is uh, Eddie Jordan's team at this point. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so, we've well, we seen that a bunch of times this year. I'm not really sure. I, I, the first time I remember really noticing it was I mentioned before the Ohio State game that that first game. You know, second half they started having all the fouls and mm-hmm. everything. Everything started, you know, unraveling, and and you saw really the body language, you know, not be so good. But um, I mean, this is obviously a different different season too. Pike talked about it being a different season, and anybody could could do anything that that they want to. Now, if you wanna, if if you wanna, you know, grab twenty rebounds, you can. If you wanna score fifty points, you can. It's new season. Everyone zero zero. So. Yeah. So uh, Archie Archie Miller just said that uh, Race Thompson will play. Wow. Um, okay. And That's for good. Armand Franklin, he's going to go through the next, you know, thirty minutes, twenty minutes of warmups here, and he he'll be dressed, uh, oh, but n- not not going to plan a whole lot on uh, around Armand Franklin. No, that's pretty crazy. Um, I think the first game they played, or maybe the last game, I, I remember uh, Thompson didn't score at all, but he, I think he had like nine, ten rebounds, which is huge for them. But uh, yeah, I, I just going back to the defensive thing. I think it's just a matter of like it's like a roller coaster. The minute that this thing comes off the tracks, everyone's going down, and it's just people are putting their heads down. The minute like a wide open dunk happens, then that's the biggest thing. It's all momentum at this point. They have momentum. This could be one of the best defensive teams in the country. They mm-hmm. lose their momentum. It's one of the worst defensive teams in the country. <laughs> but uh, it's it's interesting. It's the same thing with the offensive end, too. You'll see it here and there. And, uh, yeah, that's all I got. Yeah, typically, I feel like it typically starts with uh, foul trouble. Like, if Miles gets, you know, those two fouls in, like, a minute, then it just goes down. Da- it feels like it just goes downhill from there. And the team mm-hmm. loses all that momentum. And they kind of, you know, they kind of sulk up and down the court. And then, you know. Then you get bad Rutgers, but then, but this is a very emotional team where if they start getting things going, then they're awesome. I mean, you see them making shots and mm-hmm. playing hard defense. So this team is very, it's a very, well, it's a very streaky team. I mean, as you saw, they came out where they were like seven and zero starting out. Then they lost five of the next six. So it's a very, very streaky team. Yeah, I think that's one of the big keys. They got to get out to a hot start right away. You can't have be having these lackluster starts. It's just it kills morale. It kills everything. Meanwhile, like. You'll see Jacob Young get a steal, fast break, dunk, way up, whatever. And the whole vibe of the entire bench, the team, everyone's jumping up and down. Mm-hmm. It's just they go completely ape shit. I keep cursing yeah. and I can't help it. And I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be interested to see how that depth perception affects them. I kind of feel like that's advantage Rutgers because no offense to Rutgers, but they weren't exactly the best shooting team this year. So they kind of can they can kind of adjust to it and start attacking more like they did against Minnesota. I mean, you saw they collapsed against Minnesota, and then once they went to overtime, 
Jacob Young just decided to keep attacking, attacking, attacking. And Rutgers jumped out to, you know, an early lead. And that was that was basically all she wrote. That Yeah, that's the weird thing is that this team was one of the best three-point shooting teams in late December, early January. Yeah. And now they're one of the worst three-point shooting teams mm-hmm. in the country. It's incredible. It's like live and die by the three at this point. Uh, they're taking like, tw- what they take? Like 28, I'm looking at last time they played Indiana. They yeah, I, 11 think of them, shooting, so I, mean. I think that hot shooting was kind of a mirage, to be honest. You think so? It's they're they're yeah. they're shooting in the two matchups. They're shooting thirty eight percent from three against IU, and uh, a lot of that is most. due to yeah is <laughs> is due to the their secondary break, mm. and and that that's kind of what I wanted to touch on next. I mean, why I haven't been watching every single Rutgers game, but mm-hmm. against Indiana, they they really pressure the ball better than than most teams I've seen, especially. Obviously, Jacob Young is is just a pest on the defensive end, but they they have the the physical perimeter players to do it as well. Mm-hmm. Why why doesn't Rutgers use a little bit more? And maybe they do. I just haven't seen it, but but use a little bit more kind of full court, even if it's token pressure. Um, Thank just, you. Just something to play Thank play you. up a little bit more. <laughs> I'm glad <laughs> you it, said it because that... <laughs> like it's ridiculous. You have so many goddamn guards too, so it's not like even if guys get tired running full court press and stuff like that, like you could just swap them in and out. You have. Cable McConnell, you have Montez, Jacob, Gio, Mulcahy. They're all quick enough to uh, – maybe not Mulcahy, but um, they're all quick enough to run a full-court press and, like, a couple traps here and there, and they just don't do it. They just – I don't understand the reasoning behind it. Um, it's just – Pykele's philosophy is just play man-to-man the minute, like, the ball crosses mm-hmm. half court. You'll see Jacob Young try to pressure a little bit here and there because he just wants they to have- be like, wants to get that sneaky steal. But Yeah. Uh, they have run some press, but very little. They've yeah. run zone, but very little. It's mostly the man to man, like you were saying. Um, but I think I think Richie, I agree with you that that they should do it more. Um, and they also like the to get out and run too. They're most effective when they get out and run. So if you you know if you're always moving on defense, pressing on defense, maybe you cause the steal, cause cause a turnover, then you could get out and score needs a bucket so that's yeah. another thing is their transition game is so weird like we've like richie we've seen so many times Rutgers gets the steal and they miss the easy life they're like 50 yeah, yeah. like percent on like layups how? for the year which is like mm-hmm. an insane stat like how are you missing like easy layups um i know jacob young it, i think it happened early in the season chris will remember this it was one of the post game press conferences it was like the third one he missed in a row he's getting fast break steals and layups mm-hmm. and just missing he goes i'm not doing it anymore i'm dunking everything what, what's he doing <laughs> yep. next game this is a layup yeah, it's like oh my god, like just and then and then he missed a dunk. I think so he, I think he like got got hurt too when he fell too. So. Yeah, it's um it's <laughs> definitely an interesting question, and I I couldn't even tell you. It's just it's Pykele's philosophy, I guess, at this point. And yeah, that's, they don't really run too much of an offense. See, the one thing that I've always talked about too is the first play of the game. They seem to always go to Miles Johnson, and then they like don't go back to him. I'm not yeah. sure why, because he can score, he can dominate inside. I'm not sure why why they don't do that more. It's, it's yeah, nuts. and that that's that's been what has really taken IU out of both games has been Rutgers pressure. Um, that's what led to the huge run in the second game, and that's what led to them just kind of putting Indiana um, away in the first game. Is just not not so much forcing mm-hmm. a ton of turnovers, but forcing timely turnovers, and then really just taking Indiana out of any sort of offensive rhythm. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, I mean, it doesn't take a lot to do that for Indiana, but um, that. I mean, again, that's just what, what we just touched on is I'm just confused why Rutgers doesn't do that more often. Mm-hmm. It just seems like they have the personnel to do it, oh, and yeah. they have the guys who just seem to do a lot better in transition and even kind of the secondary break that it makes it seem almost like a no-brainer to, to kind of run it more often than yeah. not. Especially when Cliff Amaruji is on the floor and Jacob Young. Jacob Young is one of the fastest players in the conference, if not the nation. Yep. At guard, then you have Cliff Hamaru, who's probably one of the faster centers or more athletic centers, who's mm-hmm. running up and down the court. And him in transition would it's just it would just be insane. Yeah, he's you, he's coming into times. his own now too recently, Cliff. Yeah, he's showing more aggressiveness down low. And I, I I really I'm standing by what I said. Two three year player, and he's he's making the league. I'm standing by that. Mm. He just has to learn a post game, and once mm-hmm. he learns that, he'll I think he'll be very very good. But uh, yeah, I I don't understand why they don't do it, but. Because that's you, that that's how Geo Baker's mainly gotten to a rhythm. Uh, is he hit a mm-hmm. couple good trailing threes mm-hmm. um, that, yeah. that really took any sort of momentum away from Indiana in both both games? Uh, there were a couple times Indiana missed a, a layup on one end. This happened in the the most recent one, Christian Lander, when he missed 
almost every single layup he took in that game. But um, there were two instances in, in both halves where he uh, you had a chance to either extend the lead to 17 mm-hmm. in the first half. He missed that. Baker came down, hit a three. And then in the second half, um, they, they had the chance to cut it to nine, I think. And then same thing happened, missed a layup and Baker comes down secondary break hits a, um, hits a three in the, that kind of, uh, wing area. Yeah. And that's kind of something I wanted to talk about with, uh, Indiana a little bit. It's weird about them is this, I mean, tell me if I'm wrong here, but I kind of feel like with Indiana, when things start to go bad, it's just like it plateaus. It's like once they lose momentum, it's like game over. There's so many teams in this league that can take a, like a punch to the mouth and respond like Penn state the other day against Maryland. Cause Penn state got out to a terrible start, but they were able to come back and win. But with Indiana, I kind of feel like they get punched in the mouth and they kind of don't know how to respond. And that I would place on Archie. I was wondering your uh, opinion about that. Yeah. And it's been, it's been weird though, because they've been able to respond up until the, this most recent five game losing streak. That's, that's been kind of what they've held their, their head on and, and, and kind of the backbone of, of the team is being able to respond. But in this five game losing streak, they, they get punched in the mouth and they, they don't know where to, to kind of turn to. And, and Archie Miller's talked about not really having a true uh, vocal leader on this team. And you, you can see that. I mean, Trace Jackson Davis is, is vocal at times, but it's more so showing his, his emotion after a, after a bucket. And it's not so much being a, a being a leader. Al Durham has that a little bit, but it's not. It's just not to the extent that you need when a, a team goes on a, a six or seven a run, right? And you need to get a bucket because Indiana is not able to do that. And then that just compounds anything that they don't do on the defensive end, and that just leads to what could be just a seven zero run turns into a twelve or thirteen or fourteen zero run. And at that point, Indiana is then just done. Mm-hmm. So now, real quick, kind of interesting uh, thing. Jacob Young starting over uh, McConnell today. It's, it's Baker. You know, I was just about to mention that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you got three three guards, Harper and Johnson, for record. Mm-hmm. That's kind of what he started out with. I, yeah, but okay, he's not really a guard. He can kind of mm. – he is, but he, it's, he's such a weird position and a weird player. He's it's like six seven. He's a guard. He has good vision. But mm-hmm. he, he's, I think Young has started the last few games. I think it's Mulcahy who's he, been the one that's coming off the bench, right? Is that what? No. I, I, wasn't, wasn't this the same starting yeah, lineup that you guys had? The, to end the regular season? Yeah, against Minnesota. But like before that, yeah. I think it was like a seven, eight game stretch where McConnell and Mulcahy were the two and three or oh, like yeah. whatever you want to call them at this yeah. point. It's so positionless. It's ridiculous. <laughs> but yeah, it's definitely intriguing. I know Jacob's coming off a 23 point game too, which obviously helps his confidence. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm intrigued to see how much the bench plays. <clears throat> I know McConnell's going to play a good amount of minutes. We know Cliff's going to play. Who fills in for Harper's role? Palmquist got minutes last game a little bit, so we'll see what happens there. Montez, is Montez going to play as much as he's been losing minutes, it seems like, here and there? I don't know. It's a, it's it's such an interesting game, but uh, all right, we got about eight minutes left, so let's, let's do this, boys. Prediction time. I don't have a – cue the music. I don't have music, but go. <laughs> Someone go. <laughs> all right, Craig, you're going first because you, okay. you have to. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'll say I think it's actually going to be a close one because I think Indiana and Rutgers typically have pretty close games. So mm-hmm. I'm th- kind of thinking that uh, I think Rutgers is going to pull this one out 70 to 65. That's interesting. All right, I'll go. I'll go in. I'll go somewhere in the 60s. I'll go uh, 68, 63 Rutgers. Alec, we got. Um, I'll go. Uh, Breaks the hearts 60 of every Rutgers. Indiana fan. Well, oh, there you go. And then uh, <laughs> the worst part is you guys are keeping Archie Miller. Yikes. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't know. This game is so weird to me. I feel like if Rutgers gets off to a hot start, they could push that 75, 77 range, but I don't see that happening. I'm going to go with, like, Steve Peichel's defense comes in clutch, and it's going to be, like, 72, like, 65 or something like that. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna look back on this and be like, Richie, you're an idiot. Why'd you say that? Like, I mean, we, I mean, the Nebraska game was just. Yeah, the, that's you know, what, I don't want to go back and watch that, that pregame show. That threw I will me not off so bad. So I'm kind of like, I don't. Ever since that, I'm just like, I don't even know what the hell I'm talking about. I don't point. care if there's a fire. <laughs> I am not watching that pregame show again. That was rough. <laughs> that was a uh, that was a rough one. But all so right, guys. Who's, uh, who's go gonna on. be the leading scorers for each team? Oh, I saw someone just asked that. Um. Mm-hmm. Well, it'd be dumb to not say Geo or Ron, right? For Rutgers after the last two games they played, 
I'm gonna go with Ron. I'll go. I'll go. I'll go Jacob Young for you guys, even though yeah, he struggled against against Indiana the the first two games. Okay, that's an intriguing okay. one. Okay. What do you guys got? I'll yeah, go. I'll go. Just... I'll go. Geo Baker, and then for Indiana, of course, I'll go uh, Jackson Davis. Oh yeah. Definitely. Yeah, I was gonna say. I think. Oh, G- I think Jacob is gonna ride this momentum into this game too. So mm. I'll pick him, and uh, yeah, mm. I'll say Trace Jackson Davis. Yeah, I, I gotta. I mean, I'd be dumb not to go Jackson Davis, right? But since you guys did, I'll probably go. Uh, did they say Franklin's playing? Oh no, not Franklin wasn't the one that was playing. It was Thompson, right? Yeah, uh, Armand's gonna dress, but who knows how much he'll actually play? If he plays, yeah, if he's not gonna play that much, yeah, hey, I'm going Jackson Davis. I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah, as well, don't I'm cop- it, I'm copping out. I'm out. Um, <laughs> I'll go. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go Al Durham for for Indiana. Okay, yeah. well, a little bit of change. Um, but yeah, I mean, this game's no one knows what the hell is gonna happen. We don't know. We we try to pretend we know. We don't know. <laughs> but uh, all right. Any other questions, guys? We're about to wrap this up. Six twenty-five. Uh, score prediction. Did that. Uh, who's going to score the most? Did that. I got nothing. Yeah. Quick, just just quick question. How uh, if Rutgers is clicking on all cylinders? How far do you guys see them potentially going? Obviously, it depends on matchups, but in the uh, NCAA tournament. <sighs> Yeah, I, it, it's tough to be honest because right now they're kind of at like the eight nine line. So I mean, getting screwed. into the tournament is obviously you know really good, yeah. obviously for Rutgers uh, either way. Uh, but I know Geo Baker specifically have talked about you know wanting to do more than that. But um, if you're in the eight nine game, even if you win, uh, it's gonna be a tough matchup either way. And then you'll either get like a Baylor or a Gonzaga in the second round. So uh, you know, I mean, you can't really see yourself winning there. Although although Rutgers was technically. Uh, supposed to play Baylor this season, so it'll be it'll be maybe kind of cool if they if they match up. That, that's the tough one. Like that eight nine matchup sucks. It's so bad. But then again, you drop down even more. It's seven ten or go up even more seven or ten, and you're still playing the number two seed. Like you're, mm-hmm. it's not a good spot to be in if you want to make a run. Hypothetically, if if they they're gonna, I think they win the first game. I do think they win that. I don't think people – I think people underestimate the Big Ten this year. I, I know even people are still saying it's, like, one of the best conferences, if not the best. But I don't think they understand how good this conference has been this season. Like, it's phenomenal, especially defensively. Maybe at times not Rutgers, but mm-hmm. I do yeah. think – I think they can make, like, a – I think they can make a Sweet 16 run if they beat that one seed. It's just a matter of beating either a Gonzaga or a Baylor or – I don't think they'll match them up against Michigan or Illinois, but who knows? No, because I don't think they would either because yeah. of the Big Ten thing. But I mean, yeah. obviously that that's another that's another whole kind of kind of podcast for for another day. Yeah. <laughs> but all right, guys. Uh, Alec, appreciate you joining us. Craig, Chris, I'll talk to you in the next like two minutes. And uh, <laughs> peace. <laughs> thanks everyone for joining me. Yeah, guys. Thank thanks, you. Guys. Thanks, guys. Hey, right, how do I end this? Oh, got it. <laughs>